Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you for your continuous support. So today we are at the 12th episode of Optometry series. The topic for today is the sun and eye safety. I'm very, very happy to have such an eminent person and an alumni of our college, Mr. Deva Priya Mukhyopadhyay. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. I'm happy to welcome Zuleha, ma'am and Ms. Meenakshi, who is also the in charges for the optometry series. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Gomadu. Yes, yes ma'am. So what is the reason for today's topic, ma'am? So it has something to do with the month also, no, ma'am? So we'd like yes. to hear it from you, ma'am. Yes, actually, uh, so when we are uh, thinking about any lecture, we used to think about what is the use of that lecture, right? So about this topic, what I was uh, searching was for the observances of this month. So we also have this UV protection observance uh, during this July month. And one more thing what I wanted to add up here is, this is going to be on a live series uh, on YouTube, which is a platform which is uh, anybody can open and see our YouTube uh, channel and they can visit the uh, channel and then they can view anytime. So uh, when we see about the uh, awareness of UV rays and the effects on the eye, I think it is still in a low level only. So when people are having a awareness about using sunscreen, people doesn't have that much of awareness to use sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to give one kind of awareness to the public through our YouTube channel. Now we are having a session for the optometry fraternity, but still we wanted to show this as a awareness kind for the uh, public people also. So uh, I think Mr. Devapriya is also keen on uh, doing something for the public. So when I spoke to him also, he was saying any any topic, any topic is fine for me. And if it is for common people, I am ready to do. So uh, I think uh, our uh, motives think at this point. So that is why we are meeting here at this moment. Absolutely. So we have our student uh, presentation and um, Mr. Devapriya will be adding points. I think we are going to have a good session today. So all the best, everyone. Over to you all. Thank you so much, ma'am. So thank you for bringing Mr. Devapriya sir today. So he has got such a big list of you know the work experience. So now I call I upon. I think I uh, I don't know whether he remembers me uh, from his internship. I knew him. So okay. I don't know whether yes. he is. Yes, yes, I know you very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> So finally, it took place like a family get together. <laughs> so very yeah, so optometry family is, is a very big deal. It's a close we meeting. Meet. Everybody on and off. So okay. again, this is another one moment I think. Yeah, Agar Valians together. Yeah, Agar Valians together. Yes. So now I call upon Yoga Priya Dashni to welcome the chief guest today. Hi, Yoga. Yes, yeah. Yoga. You can start. Good afternoon to one and all present here. I welcome you all to the 12th episode of Optometry Series. The topic for today is the sun and the eye safety. I thank each and every one of you for being here with us today. Let me introduce myself. I'm Yu Yoga Priyadarshini, doing my second year in DAI Booth Chennai. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our honorable moderator, Mr. Devapriya Mukhopadhyay. Sir has his experience of being consultant pediatric and community optometrist at Dr. Gogate's Eye Clinic, Chief Eye Care Provider at Modern Clinic, Research Project Coordinator at Shankara Netralia Medical Research Foundation, Assistant Professor at Shankara Academy of Vision, Bangalore, Associate Professor at Vidya Sagar College of Optometry and Vision Science, a Founder and Secretary at Dr. Ashok Kumar Banerjee Charitable Foundation. CFO at Himesh Tediwari Technologies Private Limited, and the list is really long and doesn't stop here. Sir has a successful career at Lenskart as well. He started as a senior optometry trainer and been a head of professional optometry services. Sir, at present, is the manager for the special projects at Lenskart Academy. You are truly an inspirational sir. Thank On you. behalf of DAIO, thank you, sir. On behalf of DAIO, I extend my deepest gratitude for accepting our invitation to be the moderator for today's session. 
The speaker for today is Ms. Sandhya, doing her first master, first year masters in DAIO. Now I request Ms. Sandhya to start her presentation. So electromagnetic waves consist of radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. So let's see the applications of each waves in detail. So first, radio waves. Radio waves consist of frequency from 300 gigahertz to 300 kilohertz. Its applications are in telecommunication, satellites, computer networks, for other system navigations, for etc. Next comes to microwaves. Microwaves of, consist of frequency from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. So microwaves uh, can be used in Microwaves can be useful in point-to-point -point communications and uh, ground. Uh, it can be used it for, uh, as a satellite communication for uh, long-distance communications. It is transmitted, transmitted long distance by microwaves between ground stations and communication satellites or in microwave ovens. So next comes to infrared rays. It is a visible radiant uh, energy with longer wavelength than those of visible light, extending from nominal red edge of the visible spectrum at 700 nanometer. Frequency ranges from 430 uh, hertz to 300 gigahertz. So human eye can pursue ultra infra infrared radiation through some experimental ways up to 1500 nanometers. So then infrared rays can be classified into three types, infrared A, infrared B, and infrared C. Infrared C is the most dangerous to the eye. Infrared C ranges from 3,000 to 10,000 nanometer. Infrared B, also known as far infrared, it can be uh, ranges from wavelength 1,400 nanometer to 3,000 nanometer. And infrared A, is known as near infrared radiation, which ranges from 780 nanometer to 1400 nanometer. The most of the thermal radiations emitted in a form of room temperature that is known as infrared radiation. These radiations can be used in industrial, scientific, and medical applications. So, applications of infrared radiation can be uh, categorized into like they can be used as a night vision. They can be used in night vision devices, but the human cannot be detected in the darkness, but the objects and the animals can be detected with the devices known as night vision devices. So uh, ultra uh, red radiation application also involves in uh, astronomy used as a sensor equipped telescope to detect objects such as planets. So infrared thermal imaging cameras can be used in uh, can be used to detect heat lost insulated equipments to observe changing blood flow to uh, uh, detect overheating of electrical apparatus. So other applications for uh, infrared radiations are short range to wireless communications, spectroscopy, environmental monitoring, industrial facility inspection, remote temperature sensing, and thermal efficiency analysis. These are all the applications of infrared radiations. And uh, next comes, to, uh, next uh, is infra uh, visible spectrum, which ranges from 400 nanometer to seven, uh, 700 nanometer. Uh, we all know that uh, visible uh, regions are where humans can perceive the uh, radiation and humans can perceive the colors. So these comes under uh, visible radiation. And next goes to uh, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet can be divided, again divided into three types, ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, and ultraviolet C. So the uh, uh, effects of uh, this range of spectrum is not visible to human eye. Wavelength, uh, wavelength ranges from 400 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. So uh, in special cases, uh, in special medical conditions, uh, ultralight radi radiations can be visible to human eye. And the, in cases of aphakia, uh, in some cases, people can uh, perceive the ultraviolet radiations. 
so naturally ultraviolet radiation we all know uh, it is uh, emitted from sun and artificially it can be uh, emitted from uv lamps mercury vapor lamps uv lasers tanning lasers and black lights so anatomically uh, the heating effect the anatomical heating human effect is more greater than the exp experimental effect this is due to the interactions among the cells so they say that uh, human uh, anatomical effect is greater than that of experimental effects so for example the interaction between the cellular level example uh, cells uh, cornea and skin so ultraviolet radiation derives from its uh, interaction with organic molecules such as human cornea and skin so eye damage is mostly uh, by the uv rays so the most damage is occurred with uv rays lower band ranges from 265 nanometer to 275 nanometer so the common conditions uh, will come in upcoming slides so next comes uh, x rays x rays uh, ray ranges from 3 into 10 to the power 16 hertz to 3 into 10 to the power 19 hertz this is the frequency of x ray and x ray is also refers to as rontgen uh, radiation uh, the name is given due to the uh, it, x rays are discovered by william rontgen so the name is given as rontgen radiation so x rays can be categorized into two rays which are hard rays and soft x rays uh because uh, hard x rays are 5 to 10 when a ray have 5 to 10 kilo energy old uh that rays are called as hard x rays and below that level energy level are known as soft x rays so the application of x rays are wide so it is used uh, uh, in commonly we know x rays are used in medicals uh, medical radiography Uh, crystallography which is a study of dna and astronomy as we know uh, the study of uh, celestial objects and it can be used in uh, can be used in fluorescence x rays are generated within the specimen microscopic analysis industrial radiography and industrial computed tomography for the three dimensional view so these are all the applications of x rays and x rays producing a uh, burning sensation in the human tissues including high so next comes gamma rays gamma radiation extremely high frequency radiations high energy photons frequency ranges above 10 to the power 19 hertz these are the ionizing radiation so thus it causes damages to the human tissue and human high naturally uh, gamma rays are identified by radio isotopes and cosmic rays uh, ray particles gamma rays causes damage at the cellular level they can penetrate through tissue uh, causes diffuse damage throughout the body uh, low level rays causes uh, the low level rays causes the probability of cancer induction the high dosage of gamma rays causes the acute tissue damage so next comes infrared rays infrared rays are a uh, most vulnerable rays which causes damages to the tissue and when it comes to eye it uh, affects the eye so the most vulnerable part which affects the eye are cornea and aqueous humor as it, it is the anterior layer of the eye they are the more vulnerable part which gets affected by the infrared radiation and next level is crystalline lens uh, which absorbs some part of the uh, radiation and next level is retina uh, which absorbs some part of the uh, some part of the radiation so as the retina comes at last so mostly the radiation of infrared is uh, absorbed by uh, corneal anterior layer and crystalline lens as only some part reaches to the retina so it causes uh, damages according to the uh, level of absorption so it affects cornea then uh, iris then the crystalline lens then to the retina mam next slide no so mam next slide 
so classification of uv rays as we seen before uh, it is categorized into uva uvb and uvc so in uva it ranges from uh, 315 to 400 uh, nanometer uh, low bioactivity insignificant atmospheric absorption corresponds to 6 7th of the ambient uh, uv radiation uvb 280 to 315 uh, nanometer strong bioactivity inducer of vitamin d3 in adipose tissue responsible for tanning the skin generated by high temperatures lamps from tanning and treatment for uh, psoriasis and vitiligo it corresponds to one seventh of uh, ambient uv radiation and uvc intense bioactivity bioactivity uh, is nothing but um, when it affects the uh, the effects which caused by the uv radiations in human or in uh, tissue level so that is called bioactivity uh, completely absorbed by atmosphere and does not uh, exist naturally on uh, earth surface emitted by electric welding germ uh, germicidal lamps and certain excimer lasers So classification of IR, IRA, IRB, and IRC as I explained previously. So these are all the classification. It is considered into short wave IR, which is also known as near wave IR, medium wave IR. It is uh, like farthest uh, IR radiation and long wave IR. So absorption of harmful radiation by ocular tissues. So first, UV, uh, it is as we know, UV rays are categorized into UVA, UVB, and UVC. In corneal level, it causes photokeratitis, and crystalline lens level, it causes cataract, clouding of eyes, crystalline lens, typically processing over time, uh, decrease in vision, visual impairment, and blindness. So, when it reaches the retina, it causes macular degeneration and blurred vision and vision loss. So electromagnetic radiation and eye. Uh, solar radiation has been implicated with varieties of evidence as a causative agent in photokeratoconjunctivitis, pengingula and pterygium, nodular band keratopathies, epidermoid carcinoma, cataract, solar retinopathy, and macular degeneration. So these are the uh, wavelengths of UV uh, UV radiation, invisible and infrared uh, radiation, which affects the eye and skin. So in uh, UV, UV ray C ranges from 100 to 280 nanometer. Uh, photokeratitis in cornea and uh, erythema, skin burn, skin cancer. Ultraviolet ray B, 280 nanometer to 350 nanometer causes uh, photokeratitis, uh, erythema, as accelerated skin aging, increased pigmentation, skin burn. Ultraviolet A rays ranging from 315 to 400 nanometer, uh, photochemical UV cataract, increased pigmentation, visible ray ranging from 400 to 700 nanometer, uh, photochemical and thermal retinal injury in eye level, and photosensitive reactions and skin burn in skin level, and uh, infrared A and B. A ranging from 700 to 1400 nanometer, B ranging from 1400 to 3000 3, nanometer, causes cataract, retinal burns, and skin burns in skin level. Infrared B causes 1400, uh, ranging from 1400 to 3000 nanometer, causes corneal burns, aqueous flare, uh, infrared ray cataract, and in skin level, skin burns. Infrared ray C ranging from 3000 to 10,000 nanometer causes corneal burns only and skin effects are skin burns. So is it only the sun? The steady increase of electromagnetic radiation in environment, particularly the wireless signals, causes serious public concern over its potential negative impact on health. So, New, uh, in case of neurological diseases, Alzheimer disease, Parkinson disease, autism, myotropic lateral sclerosis, dementia, attention deficient, hyperactive disorders, learning disabilities, 
and cancer, infertility, conjunctival defects, cardiovascular diseases are known for the impact of electromagnetic radiations. Preventive measures. How can we prevent? So UV radiation in small amounts is essential to good health. So it leads to the production of vitamin D in the body. But in prolonged usage or in the prolonged mes uh, measures has, be, has to be minimized. So limit time in the sun, uh, midday sun, wear protective clothing, glasses with UV protection, avoid uses of artificial tanning devices. Sunbed use increases the risk of developing skin cancers. Artificial tanning should should never be considered as an option to achieve the, uh, sufficient vitamin D status. So UV radiation in small amount is, is essential for the good health. So it should be minimized. The usage of the prolonged usage should be minimized. UV glasses. UV is often separated into two category, categories based on the frequency and wavelength of the light. UVA and UVB. The cornea observes all the UVB and U, uh, most of the UVA light. But some of the UVA light reaches the lens of the eye. And over time, it observes and uh, can lead to cataracts. The small amount of UVA that gets over cornea and reaches the retina can eventually lead to macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in people older than age 65. The intense and prolonged exposure to UV radiation can cause severe damage to the eye. So UV protection is a coating added to sunglasses or eyeglass lenses to filter or block harmful ultraviolet radiation emitted by the sun from coming into contact with eye and skin. So UV coated glasses and UV protective glasses feature a thin coating made of UVNA and UVB blocking materials to protect the eyes outdoors. The yeah, ANSI Z80.32 uh, 2001 standard for non-prescription sunglasses should be followed as application. The UV coating on uh, lenses observes and reflects harmful lights. The anti-reflecting coating on the inside of the lens prevents uh, light from bouncing back into the eyes. Polarized lenses help reduce the glare uh, from horizontal surfaces like water, snow, and sand. Different tints are used for specific outdoor activities. Example, yellow and orange for hunting. So this is the UV protection sunglasses. So uh, UVA rays, uh, they damage the, uh, it is category, UVA rays, uh, as we have seen the categories of UVA radiation, UVA rays, they damage the eye lenses and can uh, harm the sensitive retina at the back of the eyeball and causes macular degeneration and permanent blindness. And UVB radiation, these rays can destroy the outer cells of the cornea, the eye protective uh, surface causing pain and blurred vision. So as we can see uh, how the UV protective lasers uh, uh, blocking the UV rays and the anti-reflection coating, uh, UV coating, polarizing film, scratch resistant coating, mirror coating are all included in UV ray sunglasses. So preventing overexposure to UV ray radiation from the sun, uh, making use of natural or at artificial shade, limit the amount of time they work outdoor in the sun, wear a wide brim hat, attach a back flap and visor to the construction helmet. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sandhya. Thank you, ma'am.
Now I request our chief guest to kindly share his insights. So it was an excellent presentation, Sandhya. Uh, uh, most of the most of the parameters are covered, only except the last but one slide. Uh, the all the coatings you were talking about, it is like uh, each and individual uh, sunglasses uh, should have uh, UV protection, hundred percent, and that that needs to be uh, very much covered. And uh, you have talked about multiple uh, multiple standards like and also multiple coatings which uh, which includes uh, you know mirror coating and and uh, other coatings like polarized and and so on and so forth so every coating has its own implementations right and and suppose a brown tinted lens okay the brown tinted lens is for uh, you know snow areas like like uk us those areas where you know, people has multiple uh, snow areas. So anyways, uh, but primarily when to the dispense a sunglass, we need to we need to keep in mind that every sunglass should have 100% UV protection. But moreover, which is required is do we knowing all these all these factors, do we carry a pair of sunglasses or a photochromatic spectacles with us? How it is my urge to one and all present in this group and who are seeing in the, this presentation, please check your bags and see if there is a pair of sunglasses available with you or not. So uh, see these uh, means whenever I started my career, since then I'm seeing a lot of presentations, but the impact of these presentations and understanding and uh, you know actualization of, of these knowledge will happen when you start implementing this or when we start implementing this in our life. In today's date, you, you have excellently, uh, you know, mentioned the, the, the challenges which we face, like, uh, like, uh, like our national cause is to uh, eradicate avoidable blindness, right? And for avoidable blindness, there are major factors like cataract, like uh, uh, refractive errors, Okay, like uh, there are, if, if you, you can imagine some, some kind of conjunctival blip or, or some kind of conjunctival uh, growth is happening, pingy, pterygium and all. So, uh, and, and then pingicula, the, these things, when, when they appear and, and when you start wearing a, uh, a pair of spectacles or, or sorry, a, a pair of sunglasses, that will help you to protect uh, you know, UV radiations, protect from UV radiations, which are, uh, you know, emerging in the, in the, in the earth. And uh, when you have this in, in, with you and knowing all these informations, if you're starting implementing in your life, it will obviously, you know, improve the, improve the status of, uh, you know, altogether global blindness. Like it might even reduce the, uh, you know, prevalence of cataract. Which is a which is a huge impact in HDI, which is a Human Development Index, which is a huge impact in in uh, GDP of the country, because you know directly and indirectly this visual status is is connected to the Indian economy, and and that is where a, a simple pair of a, you know small small steps impact in a large scale. And uh, however, it is a very good ex explanation and very good presentation. And uh, yes, I, I, I thank you and hand you, hand you on the mic. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your input. We just have a few questions from uh, one minute. There is a question like how much is cancelled by ozone layer? So UVA and UVB, the, they are, uh, uh, you know, coming to the earth. UVC is complete, which is the most harmful that is uh, cut off by the ozone layer. UVA and UVB, which is coming to the earth. But however, UVB is again cut short in, in, the, in the next phases. But what, if it is coming to your eye, it is UVA. 
okay and and that uva needs to be protected by the sunglasses or a photochromatic glasses so any tinted glass any tinted glass will help you to protect from these uv rays any dark lens which is having to be protection yes next question is does sun only emit cmr electromagnetic radiations sun uh, emits lot of you know lot of energies and uh, electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy which is including that okay it it is not about electromagnetic it, it, there are various wave patterns uh, you know radiations which emits from the sun yes the next question is how can we avoid electromagnetic radiations from gadgets you can use a uh, you know blue cut lens which is the best available uh, uh, now and uh, everyone every you know basic range of uh, you know basic range of pair of spectacles is uh, coming up with blue cut lenses which is for a noble cause so yes yeah, so next question is does contact lenses have equal uv protection as gla glasses uh that is a, that is a very ambi brilliant so contact lenses protects only cornea and for the corneal purpose whichever amount of uh, uv protection is required it is there but it does not uh, you know does not eradicate the importance of uh, you know sunglasses because it it covers all of your ocular adnexa including your uh, ocular uh, ocular bodies mm -hmm. yes yeah so next one is what what are ansi standards so in si standard is uh, i am just forgetting the full form of it however uh, let me just check back to you yeah so we also have few questions in youtube yes why do we have to know about emr to protect the eyes sir yes so ansi standard is american national standard institution and and the 2001 code the 2001 code is for the quality stature so when you are providing this uh, 2001 uh, standard now that is the quality of and and for uh, and protection assurance from the needed uh, problems yes yes yeah, sir next question is why do we have to know about emr to protect the eyes electromagnetic radiation see when you talk about protection protection from something first of all you need to know that what what is the causative agent and and how it will uh, affect your your body or your uh, organs right so when you when you know this it is important that how it will affect and when you know how it will affect then it will be easier for you to understand that unless if i wear a cap or unless if i wear a uh, you know sunglass it may affect my very sensitive organs suppose just imagine if you are not blinking you are opening your eyes and you are looking at uh, sun what will happen it will dry up you even you cannot do that for a uh, for even if uh, for for half a minute it it, it will dry up your uh, your eyes your tear film will break up and and you will feel lot of irritation so if you are not wearing this the sunglasses it will create lot of uh, you know lot of uh, troubles to you so knowing all these problems why to take troubles in your life right when you have the solution ready made it is very simple there is uh, no uh, no such uh, you know hard stuff in it thank you sir jalam ma'am do you have any questions ma'am Yes, I just wanted to add to for the student perspective. So there are few uh, sunglasses which are coated sunglasses, and there are embedded uh, sunglasses. So which one do we prefer, or what is the difference between, or is there any uh, pros and cons, or both are similar? Okay. So primarily, for which purpose we are uh, using these sunglasses? That we need to know. suppose in in uk standards we have seen practically that brown tinted lenses are very much popular there because it it soothes the eye as well as it help 
as for the ambience it it helps the person to uh, you know see better and and protect better from uh, from the uv radiations again if we go to uh, seashore then the mirror coated uh, lenses will be uh, much more prefer preferable and that is where you will see that a lot of uh, you know a lot of mirror coated lenses has been uh, sold in in tourist spot where where they have sea beaches so likewise if you uh, go to snowy areas again again snowy area prefers lot of brown uh, brown tint as well as the mirror coating stuff yes okay so what can we prefer for indian uh, climate for indian scenario yes uh, you can uh, you can go ahead with the green tint green tint uh, lenses which used for ray ban again the brown tint is very uh, preferable if you are using some kind of uh, you know uh, color enhancing uh, color enhancing sunglasses then you can prefer yellow tint uh, yes blue tint in, is good for them when the cataract is developing blue tint and and uh, and and a part of yellow tint there is a, a question in between but yes blue tint can be used yes. okay if uh, uh, if a person is buying a sunglass without knowing whether it is uv protected or not Uh, is it uh, if there is no uv protection and it is just a sunglass dark glass so what is going to be the problem for that eye when he is using sunglass and something without sunglass a dark glass without sunglass yeah, uh, without this is a very, uh, this is a very uh, you know questionable question but very intelligent question because uh, to be precise the people who sell sunglasses if it is a branded one it it mentions on the product category product details it mentions that it has 100% of uh, uh, 100% of uv protection and once once it says that that means it is tested and it is validated i would rather prefer to tell that uh, that buy any kind of product from the place which you trust that's it that's so what why i wanted to discuss about this point is as i told you earlier it is going to be on a youtube any layman person also can uh, see this so uh, the point what i wanted to stress here is if we are giving a person just to say uh, buy a sunglass and wear and go so if they are wearing a sunglass just if it is a dark glass the pupil dilation may be little more than the normal range and the uv and rays will, which is going inside is and it will harm yeah, the it is more than usual uh, without sunglasses correct, correct. so correct. we are just increasing the damage so it is better to check the standard of the sunglass and then to choose the uh, uh, usage yes. also if the sunglass is along with the polarization mm. that will impact better yeah because uh, because that ideally should the, the a polarized lens ideally should have uh, all the parameters of uv protection in today's standards so i think uh, from my side i just wanted to add these uh, on the there in actually as nam says uh, to look for the general public opinion uh, there is something they sell like uv protection glasses and polarized glasses are they different or are they same actually sir they are obviously different uh, means a person means a sunglass which has the polarization uh, if you bring it either a polarized a pol polarized state tester you can use or else you bring it uh, in a in a led screen in front of a led, led screen you rotate it in a particular angle it will completely black out so that signifies that particular direction has the polarized filter is available and and the polarized filter is available on that lens yes. okay so will it have any property of about uv coating or uv coating or uv protection because it, we use polarized glasses only for glare cutting right will it help in cutting down uv rays also yes but uh, whenever it is uh, it is state the statement is saying that it is having uh, uv protection okay that means it has uv protection because unless and until they have the uh, you know quality standard measures uh, they won't uh, write that because that will be a, a, a problematic for them also 
is there any no? any way to uh, check the uv uv protection like how you are saying the polarized glass just when you tell uh, it comes so you off. can check with the blue cut lens so mm -hmm. uh, in in the blue cut torch you can have this wavelength mentioned so uh, in that wavelength if if it cuts down the in that particular wavelength you can uh, tell yeah, that this is, UV yes, this is available but also check when you are checking with the blue cut torch if there is anything mentioned on the blue cut torch for, for the wavelength available that it is cutting down this I think Even it is available in the in the in the physics market means the physics lab where the supplies now they have lot of torches available for different different wavelengths yeah. so that also you can utilize to check yes so this will be helpful for common people as well yes yes so we see many children young children going with dark glasses uh, with their parents in their bike so we should be careful whether we are choosing the right correct. sunglasses or not correct correct we have the moral responsibility towards the society absolutely <laughs> correct thank you so much sir thank you so much, much thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much ma'am it is such a wonderful discussion coming together and discussing like this especially on uv protection on this particular but thank you so much dilupriya uh, sir for joining us beside your busy schedule thank you so much sir and dear audience i have a wonderful news for you all on this 12th episode of optometry series recently we had our job drive for the 2023 batch nearly 26 online and offline companies has participated and i'm very very happy to tell you this 360 plus graduates fresh graduates that's your fresh graduates from dr agarwal institute of optometry has participated and we got 100 percent placement so which is added like another pearl to the crown we are so happy to share this news with you all on behalf of dr agarwal institute of optometry to know more updates regarding dr agarwal institute of optometry please do follow our instagram facebook and linkedin page i will add the description i will add the links in the description meet you all in the next episode tata bye bye thank you sir Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Unstable. Thank you.